Hello everyone. Welcome to Reverse Engineering Windows 32 Applications here at Pentester Academy. This video will introduce our new course. So we're pretty excited about this class. It's one in our series of reverse engineering courses here at Pentester Academy. So I just want to give you a high level view of what's coming up in this class. So we're going to start out by talking about getting everything arranged, you know, get everything that you need. And that mostly involves getting some software. So we're going to start out with some virtualization software. You're going to want to do all of this work from your Linux workstation as usual. And you're also going to want to set up a Windows environment or two. So that's going to involve some virtualization. We're going to talk about different kinds of debuggers. Now you're probably familiar with standard debuggers that are made for programmers to use to debug their own programs. We're going to talk about some specialized debuggers that are made for reverse engineering. So debuggers that are better if you don't have the source code. You just have an executable and you're trying to reverse engineer that. You'll talk about some scripting tools. You know, automation is always a good thing to have. So we'll leverage some of our standard scripting tools for that. We will also talk about decompilers. These are programs that will take an executable and it will convert them into a C program. And we'll also talk about fuzzers. So a fuzzer is a program that will allow you to generate a lot of somewhat random inputs into a program. And this will allow you to detect flaws in the program. You know, if you can get it to crash, then you know there's a problem. And sometimes if the situation is right, you can go from getting a program to crash to being able to redirect the flow of that program. We'll talk a little bit about assembly. Uh, we'll go over just the basics and some calling conventions that are used in Windows. Now we're not going to go super deep because there is in fact a nice complete assembly and shell coding class here at Pentester Academy, which I would definitely recommend you have a look at and maybe go through that. We will also talk about stack overflows. This is one of the oldest known flaws and this is something that you know we've been doing for decades really. We've been exploiting flaws in software and overwriting things on the stack. So we'll talk about the theory of that. You know, why do these flaws exist and why are we able to exploit them? We'll talk about how you can find these flaws. Often with a stack overflow, you need to calculate some sort of an offset. So this is an offset into the stuff that you're putting into this program where you want to begin either shell code or an address that you're redirecting to. We'll talk about different methods of payload delivery, different ways of exploiting these flaws. And we'll also talk about stack protectors. Stack protectors are some things that are built into various operating systems and compilers that will help you avoid being a victim of these flaws should they be introduced into your software. So of course, these are going against what we're trying to do if we're reverse engineering with the intent of developing exploits. We'll talk about heap overflows. You know, a lot of people on the face of it, if you ask them, can I still have a problem if I allocate memory on the heap instead of the stack 
And many people would say, well, of course not. You can't have a problem with that. Well, some smart people figured out that you still can have a problem. So we'll talk about why is that the case? And how do I find these kinds of flaws? How do I deliver payloads? And how do I exploit these flaws? We will also talk about format string errors. So what's a format string flaw? Format strings are something used in many programming languages, especially C, and all of those languages based on C. So we'll find that there's a particular way that many developers assume that a function that uses a format string, such as printf, will be used, but it's not the only way it could be used. So there is an opportunity there for someone to exploit some of the features for a format string. So we'll talk about why that is, uh, how do you locate those kinds of errors, deliver your payloads, and how do you effectively exploit them. From there, we're going to get into section overflows and kernel flaws. So you might notice a theme here. We're pretty much overflowing things, possibly with the format string exception. So we'll talk about these kind of flaws. You know, how do they exist? You know, how do they get exploited? And then we'll get into how do we find them? How do we deliver our payloads? And what are some techniques for exploiting these kinds of problems? As always, we like some automation. So we'll talk about how we can use things like Python in order to automate the discovery of these problems. And how can we use our scripting tools in order to automate the exploitation as well. We will also talk a bit about shell coding. Again, we do have a nice complete course here at Pentester Academy on assembly and shell coding, which I strongly recommend that people go through. But, you know, some of you might not have time for doing that or you just want to get the highlights. So we will talk about the theory of shell coding, uh, where you can get shell code, you know, if you're not into writing your own, and also how you can write your own custom shell code. And finally, we will talk about Metasploit. There are some researchers out there who like to do everything inside of Metasploit. So we will show you how you can take your newly found vulnerability and create a module inside of Metasploit. We'll also talk about avoiding detection in Metasploit. One of the things that some of you may already know is that many detecting systems, many intrusion detection, intrusion prevention systems, don't actually detect exploits. They detect people using Metasploit. So we'll talk about if you decide to use Metasploit, how could you avoid detection or reduce the probability that you're going to get detected using Metasploit. So that is a summary of our course. And of course, this is in our large family and ever-growing family of courses here at Pentester Academy. I'm very excited to get started on this journey, and I hope that I'll see you soon.